Hey everyone, it's the start of a new weekly reading vlog and it's Tuesday, July 9th and I am continuing on with the book junkie trials. Right now I'm reading Sorcery of Thorns which honestly might be my new favorite book of the year but like I also just read Kingsbane and Merciful Crow which could be new favorite books of the year like just so many <laughs> amazing books in such a short amount of time but this one is truly like you can see all my tabs i'm obsessed with it the writing is so magical and lyrical and i just freaking love the world but also the characters and the relationships and i just like think of me with big heart eyes like heart eyes as i read this book because that's literally me as i read it because i love it so much and my battery is going to die, but before I finish my quick clip for tonight, I have some book mail I wanted to open, and so let's do it. I feel like it's been a while since I've gotten some book mail, so let's get to it. Ooh, I got The Storm Crow by Kaylin Josephson, and I wasn't sure if I was going to get this one, but then I saw the... Oh, it's so pretty. Then I saw the exclusive first edition has this lightning under the cover and I couldn't say no. I am weak but also like it does sound like something that I would really enjoy. I also have like found that I like a lot of the stuff that Source Books publishes like that's a publisher for Furyborn and a few other things that I like so I mean I'm a fan. I'm happy with this purchase. I feel like I have all these really cool YA fantasy novels that I just like want to read soon the other books i would consider in that like little category of cool up and coming like ya series and books that i want to get to would be crown of feathers circle of shadows um onyx and ivory and its sequel skyward the last Msara. i guess i would consider children of blood and bone like just these like new series that i'm like, really intrigued by and i haven't read yet oh Poppy War, which I know I would love. I just feel like now that I've been on booktube, I've just started to accumulate so many books and I need to make a dent in reading them. And I feel like my pace of purchasing books has slowed down a lot. So I know like when I buy a book now, I'm trying to be like very selective about the ones that I buy just because of the space constraints. So I'm not going all willy nilly and just buying everything, even though that's what I would like to do. <laughs> that's it for now i'm gonna go to bed because i'm tired <laughs> but i really did get some solid reading in tonight i read like 100 pages and it was such a good 100 pages oh i loved it so much i love this book sorcery of thorns it's my everything okay <laughs> good night hello it's wednesday july oh my god it's july already july 10th oh no it's Thursday, July 11th, because I stayed up past midnight, and um, I just finished Sorcerer of Thorns, and it's my new favorite book ever. Um, I'm literally so in love with it. I think it's funny that all my favorite books are about books in some way, like Stranger Dreamers about books. Sorcerer of Thorns is about books. We love books about books, but uh, it just was so lyrical and magical and really captured the essence of like you can just tell that margaret rogerson is a book lover and i loved it a lot and the ending oh my god there were some passages at the ending that were so beautiful i was really emotional finishing it and then the ending i was just like ah! i just loved it a lot and now now that I've decided it's like one of my new favorite books. I like don't just have one favorite book. Like, I don't know, it's so hard. It's so hard because there are so many books that I absolutely adore and stories that I love and they've all spoken to me for different reasons. And there's every, obviously every story is different. It's so hard for me to say the ones that I like really, really love, like, oh, I love this one more than this one. Like, I just love them all. But this one is definitely at the top of the pile because of how freaking amazing it is. Um, I want to start a collection now, but I just don't know. I kind of want to like try and find an arc of it to add to my collection, but how do people like get arcs for books that have already 
come out because I assume that it's like out on shelves. So like do people even trade them anymore? Do people even bother? I don't know. I also want to get the fairy loot and the owl crate versions because I need to collect them. But um, there are some on eBay, but they're kind of expensive. I'm going to look and see because it seems like from the past few months, when the next month's box comes out, they are put the past box from the month before on their website for sale. So hopefully it's for sale and I can buy it. Um, yeah, that's the update for now. That's my third book for the Bunk Junkie Trials. I feel good about my progress. It's day 10. I've read three books. And now I'm going to start. The Tea Dragon Society will be super easy to read through, super quick. And then tomorrow morning, I'll probably start the audiobook for Stardust on my way to work. And it's super quick. It's only like six hours or something. So listening to it on two times speed, it'll only take me three hours. So, like, I'll get it done in like two days. So then that should be done before the weekend. All right, so it's the morning on July 11th, and I don't usually vlog before work because I don't have time, but I wanted to stop on and say that I'm starting the audiobook for Stardust, so there's my shelf in the background. I love waking up and looking at my shelves, like, they're so pretty. And then that's my boyfriend's golf clubs because he's obsessed with golfing, but I love them so much. Here we are, and I'm going to continue listening. And this is what is going to get me through my morning commute. So, the most exciting news ever. If you know me, you know that I've been trying to get an exclusive edition of The Cruel Prince because if you come over here, you see I have The Cruel Prince, The Wicked King, and The Wicked King Barnes & Noble exclusive edition. And of course, I'm going to be buying both the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition and the regular edition of Queen of Nothing, but I didn't have the Gruel Prince Barnes & Noble and I was really sad about it and like everyone was like, it's really hard to get these copies. And I guess it was brought to Holly Black's attention on Twitter and our prayers have been answered because on October 15th, they are reprinting it. So I already pre-ordered it. Someone messaged me on Twitter. Thank you to Becca P. Flunner one for sending that along to me the second that she saw it. Like, that's just amazing that people know that I want it, that they'll, like, send me links. So that's so cool. But anyways, and oh my God, I'm so excited. So I'm going to put a screen recording here of how you navigate from the Barnes & Noble homepage to get to the reprint and what it says. And I, I'm just so excited. Guys, you have no idea. And now I just need Jay Kristoff to announce the Nevernight reprint so I can have a Nevernight to, to match my God's Grave and Dark Dawn, the, which I'm getting like three copies. And my rare books collection will be like pretty much complete besides Lady Midnight, the Rune Edition to match those guys there, which <laughs> that's like freaking impossible. But besides that, like, I don't know. I was able to pretty much get all the exclusive editions that I wanted. Like I got Strange and Muse and I have a video on how I find my rare books. So please, please watch that. If you're curious, I have a whole methodology and this worked pretty well. And oh my God, uh, Holly Black, you did it. And I think it's so important. It shows the power of consumerism on Twitter because other people have tweeted her like, hey, if you look, all of these exclusive editions are selling for like $300 online. You know, like you should bring this to the attention of your publisher because that $300 is a resale value. Only the person that's selling it is getting that money. But if there's such a market that people are willing to pay $300 for something, you know, Barnes & Noble will probably want to make business profits on that. And considering that the third book is coming out, like it, if I worked at Barnes & Noble, I'd be like, it would make sense to do a reprint and you get people excited about the series again and then like in the stores, they can see the Barnes & Noble exclusive editions and like buy all three when they go. So I think that's really awesome. And I, again, I think it's because of the push of people on Twitter saying, hey, like, look at this. And then she hinted at it and like people went bananas, myself included. And I don't know, I'm just really happy. I'm excited because I love collecting and I just think it's so cool.
Y'all, let's see. Saturday and I haven't really read too much the past few days. I did start the Stardust audiobook and I'm about halfway through. Probably to shut up beginning of next week because I had listened to it on my way to and from work. I also read the Tea Dragon Society last night and it is just the cutest, most heartwarming little graphic novel ever. It's so cute and I want a little chamomile tea dragon for myself. But now I wasn't sure what I wanted to read next. So I, I don't know what I want to read next because I had my books for the mages pretty much already done and I don't want to start any of my books for the reading rush yet. So I am picking up Wicked Saints by Emily A. Duncan, which is actually the book club pick for the Overhype book club that I'm a part of with Michelle, Karina, and Kendra. And we are going to have a live show on July 31st. I'll link to a tweet with more information about that. So I've heard a lot of mixed things about it like some say it's overhyped that some people really like it some people really don't and i'm interested to see i've also heard it has pretty intense trigger warming for self-harm so just be aware before going into this book it's a really pretty book and if you take off the dust jacket it says let them fear her and with these cool end papers so i'm excited to vlog my thoughts as i read this and especially i'm going to be trying to read it a little bit more critically and I'm going to be taking notes as I read just because I am participating in a live show for it and I want to be prepared. So I think it's a good one to start at this point in the month so that, you know, I'm not like stressing to read it the last minute and I didn't put it in my reading rush TBR just because I figured it would be done before the reading rush because I don't want to be rushing through it when I really want to think about it for this live show that I'm going to be doing. But yes, I mean, I'm impressed by the book and the Summary sounds really cool, and I know we follow three main characters. One is a girl that can speak to the gods, one is like a prince that is... People are trying to kill him, and then we have a monster who's like Mal Malachi, I believe his name is, and um, supposed to be for people that like the Darkling. Seems like it's dark and Russian-inspired, and I'm here for it. So I'm gonna start it. Oh, okay, so it's Sunday, July 14th. And I was really unproductive all morning, but I went to the gym and I feel like it just transformed me into this productive person because I came home and I cleaned my entire apartment and it just like needed to be done really badly. I was traveling all of June, so like when you're not home on the weekends, it really can get messy because the weekends are like my big cleaning time. So what was happening is I had all of these extra books under my coffee table and I do need to get more places to like display books but I found temporary homes for them so that they're not like in the middle of my apartment. So let me show you my TV stand and so now I have these little shelves here. So down here we have just the Shatter Me series and some random hardbacks. Um, I'm probably going to want to put the Poppy War somewhere else and like the Darker Shade of Magic with my V. Schwab collection. So this might change. And then over here I have an arc shelf which I'm actually really excited about that I have enough arcs to have like a shelf of them and I think that they'll stay there. And then I just have like a uh, graphic novel and manga there because I don't know where else to put them. Yeah, I think it's just like nice having a separate area for all the arcs so I can keep them on their own and I like really treasure them because they have really nice memories attached to them because I got most of them at BookCon. I'm excited that I like found an area for that because before this, these things only had like pictures on them and like, you know, space we could use. And then in my room, I want to get a bookshelf and maybe put it in this corner here where there is nothing or there's all this empty wall space. So I'm probably just gonna try and um, as you can see, it's literally like white empty wall space. I could put a ton of shelving here and find like lots of shelves. So I think in this area here, which is right next to my bed, I'm gonna get like maybe like three shelves and I can put them like boom, boom, boom. And then I'll have like a lot of space for books there because it's just, there's so much empty wall space and I need like pictures and stuff too. But on my little dresser, I just made a pile of like, these are all hardcovers that I like wanna read eventually, but I'm not, 
getting to soon or like don't have space on my actual bookshelf. So that is what is there. I just feel super productive that I was able to get that done because um, it needed to happen. And now I've been reading Wicked Saints by Emily A. Duncan. I'm, I'm reading it pretty slowly, but I'm on page 69. <laughs> and I am actually really liking it so far. I know there were a lot of mixed reviews, but I definitely, it has a very heavy Russian influence and that people say that there's like, influence from the Grisha trilogy, which I find there's like a little thing that I caught where there's 20 gods and the goddess of sun was called Elena, which to me sounds like very similar to Alina. So I thought that was like a cool little tribute. And I think I really like when authors put in little things that like maybe only readers would catch. I'm liking it so far. I think it's a very atmospheric world and we have a very interesting system of magic. I, even though this author was like heavily inspired by the Grisha trilogy and Lee Bardugo's work, it's not similar at all. We have like blood magic and magic given by the gods and it's really cool because I've never really like seen a magic system like this and these two magic systems are opposing and that's what's causing a war. So that's pretty cool. Um, and we're just like kind of getting to know the three main characters, which is Nadia, Seraphin, and Malachi. I think that's how you say his name. But it's spelled like Malachi. 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 I don't really know how to pronounce anything in Russian. So yeah, but I don't, it's very cool so far. And this was a most anticipated book for me. And yeah, cool spine. For the Wicked Saints, also because I'm doing a live show, I have this little like. This is a reading journal, but not like my bullet journal reading journal. This is like a legit, like messy handwriting reading journal. So I'm taking notes as I read and I'll like, usually what I'll do like with this, it's very like free, but I have like all these books that I read. I have like just notes that I've taken for them. And it's either to remind myself of things or I'll jot something down if I'm like, oh, this could be important for later, any theories that I have, or like anything that I like think stands out in terms of literary devices. Like, let's see, I have in my notes for Strange the Dreamer, I said juxtaposition of dreams and nightmares. Juxtaposition was like my favorite word to use in English essays in high school, fun fact. Okay. But yeah, I have like all my notes on like all the Throne of Glass books, so it's kind of cool. It's They're not super extensive. They're maybe like two pages each, but it's it's cool. And it's different writing notes as you're going versus like writing a wrap up, which is why I like having this little notebook and I just think it's, it's cool to go back and see what you thought. So I'm hopefully gonna maybe try and like keep up with this some more because I kind of like fell off with it. I also used to use it for video ideas, but now I go to using my Microsoft OneNote notebook, which is just really cool and it's much easier to use everything on like an online platform versus like a notebook to organize your thoughts. So I wanted to do a little flip through of my journal just as like an update because I haven't done one in a while. And uh, yeah, just so you can see. So I have all these stickers. I love stickers. And then I started filling out this content, table of contents because like, it's kind of the point of having one, right? So then this is my like title page and then I did series read in 2018. So this is kind of like before I knew the like how to really bullet journal. So as you can see, it's just all in like marker and it's like cute, but it's not like eh. And then I just did this page of shadow hunter stickers and then I like feel like I actually learned how to bullet journal. <laughs> so then here I have my most anticipated books of 2019 and as the year goes along, I'm just like coloring them in if I bought them and then giving them a star rating once I know what I want to give them. And I'm probably gonna do one for like the second half of 2019 as well, because now there's a lot more books that have been announced that I'm looking forward to. So maybe I'll do another spin like that soon. This is my 2019 reading goal. My goal for Goodreads was 100 books. And right now I'm on book 67, so I feel like pretty solid. Now I have Books Read 2019, and this is where I can write all of the titles. So this is where I'm at so far, and I have a whole other page in case I go over the 100 books. Then I have 
my YouTube tracker where I track my subscriber count. So at the moment I'm like just below 2.4K. So that's where I am. And then this like, I mean, maybe I can make it to 4,000 by the end of 2019. That'd be cool, but it is what it is. Then I have book signings and events. So these are just wrote down all the signings that I did and all the signed books that I got. Now I have my video tracker. So here I'm just writing down like when I posted the videos and what their titles were. This way I can just visually see how many videos I've posted so far this year and like how frequently. And so I'm about here. And I mean, maybe I'll run out by the end of the year and I'll need to do another one. Who knows? Then I have a Buddy Reads page, which I'm pretty much at the end of. So I may have to redo these spreads for the second half of the year. And then also readathons. So these are the readathons I've participated in Booktube games, Biblio games, Book Junkie Trials, and Reading Rush, and who knows what else. And these will be colored in when I complete the trial. Now I move on to my monthly spread. So this is January and I did a snowflake theme and I just have my new releases and the day that they come out over here and I color them in if I bought them and then my TBR and I color them in if I read it. And this is my wrap up page and these are just the books that I read with the star rating and I've kind of like changed the way that I do stars over time. And as you see here, this is a novella, so I didn't give it a rating. And yeah, I just enjoy my snowflake doodles. Then we have February. And here is my new release page and then my TBR page. And as you can see, I didn't do like super well on this TBR this month, um, but I love the little Valentine's Day theme. It's super cute. Then we have the book to game spread where I have the challenges and my TBR. I was on Team Ketterdam, so I have no mortars, no funerals. And then my page red tracker, which I got from the spreadsheet for the game so that I could have it here and I don't normally do page trackers because I just feel like I don't always want to track it but for readathons I like to see what I'm doing. Then we have of course my February wrap up and here I like outline the stars and then I colored them in which they still don't look super great but I like them. Then we have our, my March spread which I really enjoyed because it's Priori of the orange tree themed and that's when I read Priori and we have little orange blossoms and oranges and I just love the blue and the orange together and then we have my March reads and a lot of five star books but this is when I just switched to doing solid stars and I think I like the way it looks a little bit better. Next April which I also really like is my birthday month so I wanted to do flowers because I'm all about spring and my April wrap up which I just love the colors. I didn't read that much this month. Then we have May which is watermelon themed. I just I love doing like cutesy themes. <laughs> and then my May wrap up. Then we have my book con haul. So this is a book con sticker I got in the 2018 and they did rebranding of book con. So this is what the old logo looked like, but I put my haul. So this is my signed books here. And then I put my arcs that I got here and I'll color them in once I've read them. So actually I probably need to color in the Merciful Crow because I read that one. And I did this one in gel pen, so it's very glittery. Mm -mm. Then next is my June reads and here I switched to the style of doing like script and print together and I really like the way that the spread came out because it's very um, leafy and cool and I did this one by just looking on Pinterest and copying what other people have doodled so that's pretty much how I learned how to doodle. And then here is the biblio game so I was on the heroes and I have the main classes and the hero classes, but I have not filled out the page tracker yet. I need to go back and look at the spreadsheet and figure out that and then do the, the tracker so I have it all um, together. But I got a Tombow pen so I could learn how to do the brush grip and I really like the way that this word came out. And of course, next we have my June Reads wrap up, which I also, I think this one came out a little bit better than the other one and I just like love the green theme. And now we have July, which is 4th of July themed because I did this spread right around the 4th of July. So we have lots of fireworks. And this is my TBR, which is basically my TBR for the Book Junkie Trials. But I didn't like say anything about the trials specifically because I am overlapping a lot. And then we have the Book Junkie Trials spread. So I actually think that this one came out really cool. Um, I did little like icons for each one and I don't know, I just like the way that it came out for the mages. And then this is the quest champion. So these are just a list of all the quests and like what they are. I didn't put the book names there or anything like that. 
and then we have mage page tracker which i just started filling out i have like a spreadsheet that i'm keeping on my computer and i'm just writing down what i'm reading every day and getting it off goodreads because i try to update my goodreads right before i go to bed every day and this is where we're at so far and then here at the end of the month i'm going to do a stats page then my plans going forward because i've just been watching so many reading journal videos i want to do more are i want to do this is going to be my reading rush page so it's going to be my reading rush tbr and my reading rush tracker and i may do like another stats page i don't know and then <clears throat> i want to do like <laughs> i may try and take my owls we'll see but then i saw both books with chloe and Brittany. the bibliophile like printed out the page for the creators and just stuck them in and i don't know like there's just like so many possibilities but i definitely think i want to be using my journal for more spreads than just like the reads and the uh like more than just two pages a month you know because this is supposed to take up like the whole of 2019 so i need to think of like more monthly spreads that i want to do so i'm obviously readathons add stuff but maybe like a quote page or something like that even though i'm scared because i'm not that good of an artist but i've just been watching a lot of videos for inspiration and i'm probably going to do a video in the future about like how to approach a bullet journal for reading when you are a complete noob and not artistic at all because i literally don't even have that much artistic skill this is literally just from like copying other people like i would never think of I would never sit down and be like, I'm going to draw a leaf and like know how to draw it this way. Like it just is not intrinsic to me at all. So yeah, I mean, I'm just like really, really loving my reading journal. I just think it's a really fun time. And it's been like, I've been really happy that it's like a fun little like habit that I picked up because I'm having a lot of fun with it and I think it helps me tap into my creativity. Like booktube helps me tap into my creativity whereas before this I didn't really have a creative outlet and I love like content planning and stuff like that. But I feel like this is more of like a like a visual thing instead of like creating videos. Like it's actually like a journal where you sit down and journal and it's just so relaxing. Yeah. And I think at work tomorrow I'm gonna print out some stuff to like stick in here and I don't know just gotta like think of what other types of spreads i want to do so actually leave a comment down below if you have a reading journal or even if you don't want but like your favorite spreads to do in the journals i'm not going to use it as like an agenda because i have an agenda that i already own um for like my to-do lists and they're a mess like i don't want this to be messy i want this to be really nice and a way to track my reading um or if you have a favorite reading journal video that you want to drop down below i think that i would really enjoy that because i just literally the way i've learned to do this is by copying other people because they have better ideas than i do and now it's time to stop procrastinating and doing my june wrap-up okie dokie i've been reading more of wicked saints and i'm now on page what page am i on it doesn't have a page number on this page 119 and i've decided i want to try and read 100 pages a day we'll see how that goes with during the week because i work and that could be unrealistic but i'm gonna try so yesterday i was on page 35 and so i want to get to 135 so that just means i have two more chapters until i get to my goal for the day which Sounds good because it's like 11 p.m. now and that's probably when I'm going to want to go to bed is after two more chapters because it's only like 15 pages. So, you know, I feel good about my progress and I actually really like it so far. It's really interesting. Definitely a really unique system of magic and the characters are cool and it's definitely Russian inspired and I can't pronounce any of the names. I tried to pronounce them to my friends. Soleil in specifically who is taking Russian lessons. She laughed at me because I deserve to be laughed at for my poor pronunciations. I think I know how to say the main characters' names. It's Nadia, Seraphin, and Malachi. That's the important part. But now what I want to do is I used to be good about bookstagramming, but now I'll just like post a picture of myself with the book, usually from like a wrap up or something like that. But I like want to actually start doing book pictures or like there was a strategy someone was saying they like alternate between like people picks and book picks so i'm gonna try and take some book picks now while i have the time i don't really know like 
what I want to do for it. But I figured I maybe I'll do like a little montage of me taking book pics. We'll see. We'll see. And then I'm gonna finish up these two chapters and then I'm gonna go to sleep. Oh no. I did not mean to do that. Alright, I'm just gonna try and use this white fluffy carpet as like a background. We'll see how it goes. This first one I'm gonna do a picture of is Akamath because Akamath is bae. So this is how I'm framing it. Got the little crown here. Cause you know, you know Feyre's a queen. And um, let's see how it goes. I've decided since I'm excited for the Barnes & Noble reprint, I'm gonna try and do some sort of picture with my Barnes & Noble Wicked King, my regular Wicked King, and my Cruel Prince so that I can post on Instagram about how excited I am. So let me just see how I wanna lay these out. I feel like it could just be a good habit to get into to like pick two or three books every Sunday and take pictures of them so that I have content for the week or more. I don't know. It's just it's just getting in the habit of taking pictures. Just trying to be a full booktuber, good reader, book twitterer, book tweeter, bookstagrammer, book person book nook. I have reached my goal for the evening and I'm currently on page 137 so about 100 pages today. I really liked it. I am really enjoying this one so far. It's really cool. Very Russian. I was not Russian at all. Very Russian. <laughs> I'm not even gonna try and do a Russian accent but it's just gonna end horribly. So I totally forgot to mention this before, which like, why wouldn't I mention this? But something really exciting is that I'm now an affiliate for Book of the Month YA. They just started their YA branch and they reached out to me wondering if I wanted to be an affiliate. So if you use my link down in my description, which will be in all my videos from now on, and you sign up using my link, I'll earn a small commission. And I'm gonna be soon getting a box from them. So I'm really excited to unbox that. And I'm just excited because now my channel is getting to the point where I can start working with brands and it's just like exciting, you know, something that is a hobby turns into something that can actually like, you know, be a business venture, which is kind of cool. So it's exciting, you know, follow your passions and then you never know where they may lead. So yeah, if you are interested at all in Book the Month YA, please consider using my link to sign up. I would appreciate you forever. Okay, so. To quickly wrap up what I have read this week, I finished Sorcery of Thorns, which is now like my new favorite book ever. I love this book so much. Just like everything about it, the library aspects, like, oh my God, I love it. I have started the audiobook for Stardust and I'm about 50% of the way through and it's really quick. So I should be finishing that in the next two days and then I'll start another audiobook that I have on my list. But I was just browsing Scribd and there's like a lot of books that I wanna read that I don't necessarily know like if I'll like it or not because like I feel like I use audiobooks for books that I like 
I'm interested in, but I don't necessarily want to go out and buy a physical copy. So it's a good way of listening to stories that way and then it's like all of my script apps and i get my money's worth out of script so or like you know i listen to more contemporaries and stuff because with my fantasies i feel like i like to go back and reread them which is why i buy them but i don't necessarily feel that way about contemporaries so i think it's just going to help me like save some money in the long run and i have found that there's actually a lot of books i'm interested to listening to on script so i'm just trying to use it more because i feel like i haven't been using it as much and i want to make sure i get my money's worth out of it. Okay, that was a tangent, but yes, I am 50% of the way through Stardust and it's very like whimsical so far and it just has made me excited to watch the movie. So hopefully I'll watch it at some point this week or over the weekend. Next, I read The Tea Dragon Society by Katie O'Neill. This is the most pure and wholesome comic ever. And um, chamomile is my favorite tea and this is the chamomile tea dragon. I need to adopt one. I want to see if they sell like stuffed animals <laughs> I want one so bad. And then, of course, I have started Wicked Saints, which is going to be my, which one is this? The Squid for Intimidating. And I think I chose this one for being intimidating because it's for like a live show at the end of it, which is like I'm in a book club now. So, you know, it's, it's intimidating. I think it counts. And also just like it has controversial opinions. Like it seemed like when it first came out, everyone loved it and people started not loving it. And now I just feel like it's somewhere in the middle. And I'm wondering what the other people in our little club are gonna think, if they're gonna like it or not, but I'm enjoying it so far. I don't have anything negative to say thus far. So we'll see, maybe I'll be there and I'll be like the only one that likes it and everyone is gonna be like, we hated this book. And I'm gonna be like, I liked it. Hopefully I continue liking it. With that being said, I think it's time to close out this vlog since it is midnight and I need to go to work in the morning and it's the end of the week. So with that being said, have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.